welcome back in today's video let me explain you the topic hiv aids as we all know throughout the world one of the most deadly disease responsible for the death of more than 2 million people every year that is hiv aids hiv stands for human immunodeficiency virus initially when a human is infected with hiv that person is said to be hiv positive within some years hiv progresses into a final stages of infection called aids so that's why if you ask me what is hiv aids a viral disease a transmissible disease and it is usually transmitted from one person to another person by unprotected sex etc and the first case of hiv was diagnosed at cdc cdc stands for center for disease control at usa in the year 1981 and the causative organism or the causative virus of hiv aids for the first time isolated from the blood of the patient by Luke Mantenier in the year 1983 and in the year 1984 this virus was identified as a retrovirus and it was initially named as HTLV and today we are calling it as HIV and this credit goes to Robert Gallo so related to discovery of HIV virus students should remember two names that is Luc Mantenier and Robert Gallo Luc Mantenier isolated the causative virus for HIV from the blood of the patient for the first time and this virus was identified as HIV and it is an RNA virus this credit goes to Robert Gallo HIV is a retrovirus and we have to understand what exactly a retrovirus is if you ask me what is a retrovirus usually it is an rna virus means the virus whose genome is made up of single stranded rna so usually we know in the world most of the organisms genetic material or the genetic information stored in the double stranded dna but rarely some of the plant viruses and some other animal viruses dna is absent due to the absence of dna rna only acts as storehouse of genetic information and such virus is said to be an rna virus and these rna viruses will undergo a special process called reverse transcription in the host body as this rna virus which undergoes a special phenomena called reverse transcription such virus is called retrovirus so here student should clearly understand what is a retrovirus an rna virus what do you mean by rna virus virus whose genetic material is made up of only rna and these rna viruses undergo a special phenomena called reverse transcription inside the host body cells and all such viruses are called retroviruses and hiv also belongs to the category of what retrovirus so with this it is very clear whenever hiv attacks the human body in some types of human body cells hiv undergoes a special phenomena called reverse transcription and to perform the function of reverse transcription a special enzyme is required and this special enzyme is called reverse transcriptase all viruses cannot undergo reverse transcription only some rna viruses inside the host body they can undergo a special phenomena called reverse transcription how can they undergo this process which enzyme makes it possible if you ask me this question my answer is reverse transcriptase it is also called rna dependent dna polymerase so if you remember what is transcription 
synthesis of a single stranded mrna from double stranded dna but in this rna viruses genetic information flows from rna to dna usually in most of the organisms genetic information flows from dna to rna that process is called transcription but in rna viruses genetic information is present in rna itself and it flows into what dna and which makes which enzyme makes this process possible that is nothing but reverse transcriptase so that's why on existing rna or by making use of existing rna this enzyme can synthesize a double stranded dna that's why this enzyme is popularly known as rna dependent dna polymerase this enzyme reverse transcriptase was discovered by temin so the enzyme reverse transcriptase and the process of reverse transcription were discovered by temin so named after temin process of reverse transcription is otherwise called teminism for competitive exams important question what is teminism teminism is the other name for the process of reverse transcription why do we call it so the process of reverse transcription enzyme reverse transcriptase were discovered by temin so named after temin this entire process is called teminism and teminism is performed only by which type of viruses rna viruses what is an rna virus virus whose genetic material is made up of single stranded rna and hiv is also a virus whose genome is made up of two strands of single stranded rna along with two strands of single stranded rna what else is present an enzyme called reverse transcriptase is present along with reverse transcriptase one more enzyme is also present in the genome of hiv this enzyme is called integrase so students should remember when we look into structure of hiv its genome is made up of two strands of single stranded rna along with two strands of single stranded rna two important enzymes are present which are the reverse transcriptase and integrase now let us know the modes of transmission of hiv from one person to another person because in the society there are so many myths and people feel like just by sharing common household items and by using the same washrooms etc or by using same utensils or just by shaking hands etc hiv may transmit from one person to another person and by these ways hiv is never going to transmit from one person to another and here i have written what are the most possible ways of transmission of hiv that is unprotected sex whether it is in homosexuals or in heterosexuals if one partner is affected and another partner is definitely going to suffer from hiv infection and second one unsafe blood transfusion so at the time of blood transfusion without proper checking if the donor's blood is given to the recipient if donor is affected recipient is also going to suffer from hiv infection and in organ transplantation means unsafe organ transplantation is if donor is affected recipient is also going to suffer from hiv infection and uh, contaminated needles and syringes this is the most common way because today some drug abusers etc in that crew if at least one person is affected from hiv and if they are taking the drug with the same contaminated needle or syringe members of that entire group or entire crew are going to suffer from hiv infection and finally hiv infection can be congenital that is by birth itself hiv may spread from mother to child or mother to newborn at the time of birth itself through the placenta so that's why in the society today governments are trying to create awareness among the people whenever a female conceives if she is having any doubt and she is asked to go for hiv diagnosis because today we have many techniques medical technologies though the mother is affected if we know in the beginning itself and we can make the child safe so that's why 
So there is every chance that HIV may spread from mother to child also if the mother is infected through the placenta. So HIV may spread to the newborn babies also. So these are the most possible ways of transmission of HIV from one human to another human. As I already told you, HIV progresses into final stage of infections called AIDS. So AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. With this it is very clear, a HIV patient as the infection is passing on, infection is getting prolonged, person ultimately going to develop what immunodeficiency. So with this it is very clear, whenever HIV enters the body of a person and it is going to attack some of the most important cells which are involved in the immune responses and day by day this immune cell count keeps on decreasing and person starts developing immunodeficiency and finally it results in person's immune system becomes completely destroyed and immune system stops giving its response and so that person starts suffering from various secondary infections, variety of cancers, even nervous system can be damaged and finally it results in the death. So with this it is very clear whenever HIV attacks the body of a human and which cells in the human body will become target for HIV virus and HIV always targets the cells with a special type of markers which are called CD4 markers. So with this student should remember HIV is not going to target and attack all the cells in the human body. HIV can bind, destroy and attack only the cells which are provided with the CD4 markers. And if you ask me what are the cells in the human body Provided with this surface marker called CD4 marker, the most important cells with the CD4 markers are macrophages, T helper cells and dendritic cells. So with this it is very clear, out of all the cells in the human body, only three types of cells are provided with a surface marker which is called CD4 marker. CD stands for cluster differentiation. So on the cell surface there is special protein markers are present and CD4 markers are present only on three types of cells which are the macrophages, T helper cells and dendritic cells. So with this it is very clear whenever person is suffering from HIV infection in the body of that patient, in the body of that person, day by day, macrophage count, T helper cell count and dendritic cell count keeps on decreasing. And during initial stages of infection, HIV attacks macrophages and in initial stages of infection, HIV multiplies inside the macrophages. So that's why macrophages are popularly called HIV factories of the human body. So initially it gets multiplied, many infectious viruses are produced and later they start attacking T helper cells and dendritic cells. And when we look into the T helper cells, the first type of T lymphocytes, we call them T helper cell, otherwise they are called CD4 cells. If you remember, out of the two T lymphocytes, two important types are T helper cells, TH and TC cells. On the surface of T helper cell, which type of marker is present? CD4 marker is present. Whereas on the surface of TC cell, CD8 marker is present. That's why HIV will never directly attack TC cells. So which cells will become main target for the HIV? That is T helper cells. Why? T helper cells are always provided with which type of surface marker? CD4 marker. And if you ask me why T helper cells are very important, T helper cells help in the production of type of cytokines called interleukins. 
these interleukins are very very important in presence of interleukins only b lymphocytes can produce antibodies so antibodies offer us humoral immunity and uh, transformation or differentiation of t c cells into effector cells also happens under the influence of interferon so if interferons are not there b lymphocytes cannot produce antibodies so we suffer from deficiency of humoral immunity if interleukins are not there t c cells cannot differentiate into effector cells they cannot perform cytolysis so cytolysis is nothing but cell mediated immunity function and antibodies offer us humoral immunity because antibodies are the product of what b lymphocytes so with this it is very clear if t helper cell count decreases both the humoral immunity response as well as cell mediated immunity response keeps on decreasing so as hiv slowly progresses into aids person start suffering from deficiency in both the types of immunity that is humoral immunity as well as cell mediated immunity and finally dendritic cells they are also provided with the cd4 markers but dendritic cells always help uh, taking this hiv virus into the central nervous system so in this way three types of cells in the human body will become main target for the hiv what is the reason because the three types of cells only are provided with cd4 marker so hiv by making use of its proteins it can attack only to the cells with cd4 markers which are the three types of cells that is macrophages t helper cells and dendritic cells when we look into the structure of hiv here i have drawn a very simple structure of hiv and based on the structure HIV is an enveloped virus and its students should remember viruses are not the complete cells because they lack the cell machinery they do not contain cytoplasm and other cell organelles so virus is simply said to be a particle and this particle is go going to have what these particles are made up of only nucleic acid and protein coat called capsid that nucleic acid can be either dna or rna if nucleic acid is dna that is called dna virus but we are talking about hiv i already told you in hiv genome what is absent dna is absent in the diagram you can see we have two single stranded rna molecules act as the genetic material and this genetic material is covered by a protein coat and protein coat is always called a capsid that is the most simple structure of a virus and students should remember most of the viruses structurally they are said to be nucleocapsids if you ask me why why do we call them nucleocapsid ultimately they are made up of nucleic acid plus a protein coat called capsid and they do not contain cytoplasm and they do not have any other cell machinery that's why when virus is outside the host body it is almost like non living it is nothing but when virus enters the host cell it starts making use of host cell machinery and it multiplies at rapid rate that's why for easy understanding i say outside the host cell virus is nothing and inside the host cell virus is everything so same thing happens with hiv also and in this structure two single stranded rna molecules and i already told you in the genome of hiv reverse transcriptase enzyme is also present and this is the protein coat which is called capsid and structurally hiv is an enveloped virus i said why protein coat is externally covered by a phospholipid envelope that's why it belongs to the category of what enveloped virus and along with this within the phospholipid coat glycoprotein molecules are present so these glycoprotein molecules only are essential for the binding of hiv to the cd4 markers present on the cell surface like what macrophages t helper cells etc and when we look into the simple life cycle of hiv here just you see hiv virus 
binds with what I said CD4 marker and let me imagine this is a T helper cell. So on this T helper cell surface CD4 marker is present with the help of this glycoprotein HIV gets attached to CD4 marker then being an intracellular parasite HIV penetrates the cell. Once it penetrates the cell it starts making use of host cell machinery and students should remember I already told you HIV progresses into AIDS and if you ask me in the progression of HIV into AIDS the two key events occur the two most important events are reverse transcription and provirus formation let us see what it is whenever HIV enters the host cell I already told you in the HIV's genome what is present two single stranded RNA molecules are there reverse transcriptase enzyme is there so inside the host cell by making use of reverse transcriptase HIV undergoes a process that is reverse transcription as a result of which what is formed viral DNA is formed which is double stranded viral DNA is formed from single stranded viral RNA by a process called reverse transcription what makes this process possible because naturally in the HIV genome which enzyme is present reverse transcriptase is present with the help of reverse transcriptase inside the human cell HIV undergoes a process called reverse transcription because of which double stranded viral DNA is formed now this viral DNA which is formed as a result of reverse transcription gets integrated into the human DNA in presence of an enzyme called integrase I told you for the process of reverse transcription which enzyme is required reverse transcriptase is required at the end of reverse transcription what is formed double stranded viral DNA is formed and double stranded viral DNA gets incorporated into human DNA in presence of an enzyme called integrase now this double stranded viral DNA is said to be provirus so with this it is very clear at the end of reverse transcription double stranded viral DNA gets incorporated gets integrated into human DNA now it becomes the permanent part of the human DNA at this stage virus is said to be in which condition provirus once the provirus is formed viral multiplication becomes rapid and most important cells of the human body getting ruptured and their count keeps on decreasing and person starts suffering from various infections and collection of symptoms and finally it results in a condition called AIDS as I already said HIV targets the cells with CD4 markers initially it multiplies in the macrophages and the new viruses which are formed keep on attacking the most important cells of the immune system that is T helper cells name itself indicates it helps all other cells of the immune system to perform their function so day by day month after month CD4 cell count that is T helper cell count keeps on decreasing and person starts suffering from severe immunodeficiency and progression of HIV into AIDS is categorized into five stages by Center for Disease Control and when we look into stage 1 it is said to be asymptomatic because in stage 1 person do not show any special clinical symptoms but person may suffer from persistent high fever and abnormal weight loss like within few days around more than 10% of the total body weight, weight is uh, lost and person suffer from chronic diarrhea, rashes on the skin etc. But there are no special clinical symptoms that's why stage 1 is said to be what? Asymptomatic but students should remember chronic diarrhea, abnormal weight loss, rashes on the skin etc. can be observed. And stage 2 which is very important here because time taken for stage 2 varies from person to person it depends on their lifestyle depends on strength of the immune system what is stage 2 it is 
the time interval between infection to clinical symptoms which may last from few weeks to maximum 13 years and after the completion of stage 2 person enters stage 3 so stage 3 is characterized by lymphadenopathy lymphadenopathy is the condition of swollen lymph nodes so in most of the places lymph nodes and lymph glands are subjected to swelling that condition is called lymphadenopathy and then it enters a stage called 4 and in the stage 4 what happens now as immune response keeps on decreasing person starts suffering from so many secondary infections that's why actually acquired immunodeficiency syndrome if you ask me what is a syndrome in simple terms syndrome is a collection of symptoms in AIDS particularly you cannot say only this symptom occurs that symptom occurs person may suffer from cold for years and the simplest infection in the body cannot be cured because immune system response is decreasing day by day so in stage 4 person starts suffering from so many secondary infections like some formation of neoplasms, new cancers, etc. And finally, when HIV progresses into AIDS, that is fifth stage, in fifth stage, person starts suffering from variety of cancers in the body. As WBC count decreases, we call that condition as leukopenia. And even platelet count decreases, that is called thrombopenia. So, variety of secondary cancers, leukopenia, thrombopenia and in stage 5, person suffers from a characteristic type of skin cancer which is called Kaposi sarcoma. So, this is how HIV progresses into AIDS like in some years, it depends on the strength of the immune system and lifestyle of the person. So, for our Medical convenience for easy understanding, CDC has divided progression of HIV into AIDS in 5 stages and what happens in which stage we have already discussed and coming to when we look into. Now let us know <coughs> the diagnosis of HIV. So whenever a person is suffered from HIV infection and always in the field of medicine we use the word prevention is better than cure so i already told you what is the modes of transmission of hiv unprotected sex unprotected blood transfusion having multiple sex partners and all these things should be avoided when a person wants to be free of hiv infection and still if a person is having any doubt because of some reason he met with an accident in emergency he had some blood transfusion if that person is having the doubt that he may be infected with HIV. So, initial diagnosis, diagnosis of HIV in the initial stages is very important. That initial or primary screening of HIV is called ELISA. So, ELISA stands for Enzyme-Linked Immune Sorbent Assay. So, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay acts as the primary screening test for HIV because HIV is a typical virus. It is very difficult to detect the presence of HIV virus in the blood of the suspect. So, in this test, what do we do? We take the blood of the suspect and we add HIV proteins to that blood of the suspect and if already anti- HIV antibodies are produced means antiviral antibodies are produced means if HIV is already present antiviral HIV antibodies are produced there and these antibodies present in suspect of the blood will react with the HIV proteins and cause some color change looking into that color change we will come to know that HIV virus is present in blood of the suspect and now that person is said to be positive for HIV as I already told you it is primary screening and for further confirmation positive ELISA tests are further confirmed by another test called western blot this point is important so ELISA is the primary screening test of HIV if ELISA says person is positive for HIV 
further confirmation can be done by another diagnostic test which is called western blot so this is about diagnosis of the hiv because it is very clear early diagnosis is very important why if you remember progression of hiv into aids it passes through main stages i said that is reverse transcription and pro virus formation today we have many drugs available there is no medicine which can permanently cures hiv but today we have many medicines which can work against reverse transcription and which can delay the process of reverse transcription and all these drugs which delay the process of reverse transcription are commonly called anti retroviral drugs and in the hiv treatment the most commonly used anti retroviral drugs are azt dvc and ddi azt azt stands for azudothymine ddc stands for di deoxy cytidine ddi stands for di deoxy inosin and students remember these drugs cannot cure the hiv permanently but in in what way they help by working against reverse transcription so that's why progression of hiv into aids can be delayed when a patient uses this drugs called anti retroviral drugs so this is the treatment available for hiv but always student should remember prevention is better than cure so that's as there is no permanent treatment for hiv so every person should take appropriate measures and to protect themselves from the hiv and to create awareness among hiv and aids December first of the every year is observed as World AIDS Day. To create awareness about the harmful effects of HIV AIDS and modes of transmission, variety of government and non-government organizations are conducting various programs through electronic media and print media, etc. And among these students should remember. the government organization naco simply we call naco that is national aids control organization so this national aids control organization creates variety of programs to create awareness among what are the harmful effects of hiv aids and here unfortunately the sad truth is that when you look into the hiv infected people majority of the people are in the age group of 15 to 24 years with this it is very clear this is the age group people are falling prey to this harmful infection called hiv due to lack of awareness related to sexual education so that's why even governments are promoting the sexual education in the higher education level like higher schools and all so that is very important so here i wanted you to remember national aids control organization and one more important word to remember this word don't die of ignorance so in the textbook it is clearly mentioned we can expect such questions the line don't die of ignorance is associated with the hiv aids because most of the people are falling prey and losing their lives just because of the ignorance so with this in this video i have covered what exactly hiv aids is what are the harmful effects of hiv aids and how hiv progresses into final stage of infection called aids thank you